In today's review, we will start to take a detailed look at another of Peter F. Hamilton's expansive space opera series, namely the Night's Dawn trilogy. The trilogy consists of the Reality Dysfunction, the Neutronium Alchemist and the Naked God, which itself is the centerpiece of the wider Confederation Universe series. The other two entries are the short story collection A Second Chance at Eden and the Confederation Handbook, which is Peter F. Hamilton's companion guide, including a full list of characters and their roles, as well as a complete timeline of this massive universe he created. Hence, only the novels of the trilogy and the short story collection will receive their dedicated review video. Published in the year 1996, The Reality Dysfunction is the first entry to the trilogy, as mentioned before, and is of truly massive proportions, which is evident from a page count of 1223 pages. This is not a typo, nor have I misspoken. It is telling that even Peter F. Hamilton remarked in one interview that, and I quote, if I'd thought it through from a commercial viewpoint, I'd have made it a 10-part series, which would have made me lots more money, but as it is, it's only 3, although it's 12 in Italy. Indeed, the Nightstone series tends to consist of more entries in its translations to other languages, typically in the range from 6 novels to a dozen as mentioned. The US version, for example, uh, split each book of the trilogy into two. Nonetheless, I will refer to the massive UK versions in my reviews. The scientific hardness of the reality dysfunction is on the lower side of the sci-fi mo scale, mainly due to the existence of aspects such as faster-than-light spacecraft or even a form of telepathy. The scale of the literary universe is, as mentioned, truly expansive, and Peter F. Hamilton knows how to expertly interweave different narrative perspectives with each other. Furthermore, it goes without saying that the large page count also helped to establish such a vast universe. In addition, the amount of original and intriguing ideas and concepts presented in this novel is noteworthy. For instance, the way the different human factions interact and how still present technological constraints influence the pace of human expansion into the wider universe are well thought out and make sense at least in universe. Unsurprisingly, the list of relevant main and side characters is also quite long, which is typical for most of Peter F. Hamilton's books in any way. In terms of its critical reception, a cursory internet investigation reveals that the reality dysfunction is not credited with any awards or even award nominations. Nonetheless, the reality dysfunction has gained some respectable appeal with the wider public, as evidenced by a combined rating of 4.2 out of 5 stars based on 10,000s of reviews on Goodreads, Library, Thing and Amazon. Currently, there are no indications for any adaptation of the reality dysfunction for the big screen, TV or streaming. The reality dysfunction, as well as the other books of the trilogy, are set in the early 2600s AD, apart from a prologue that takes place earlier. Humanity is organized in the Confederation, a collective uniting two main factions, the Adamists and the Edenists. The Edenists possess the affinity gene, enabling telepathic communication between each other and with their advanced living starships and habitats. They enjoy a higher standard of living, mining helium-3 from gas giants, the essential energy resource of the Confederation. On the other hand, the more quote-unquote classical humans, the Adamists, are divided into nation-states and rely on mechanical and cybernetic technology, mostly avoiding biotechnological constructs due to cultural and religious reasons. Despite their differences, the two main factions collaborate in the Confederation to regulate trade, prevent war and control the proliferation of antimatter. 
Humanity has encountered some extraterrestrial races, most noteworthy the insectoid Tirathka, who fled their dying planet, and the Kiint, an ancient highly advanced species focused on learning about the universe. Additionally, the Confederation discovered the ruins of the Naimil, a race that self-destructed centuries ago. The reason triggering this cataclysmic event still remains a mystery. However, unexpected events in the jungle of an otherwise unremarkable low-tech colony, inhabited by emigrants escaping the overpopulated ecologies of Earth, and so-called involuntary transportees, in other words, petty criminals that were exiled, threatens to throw the Confederation into chaos. There are more important plot points and perspectives, but to list them all would be beyond the scope of this review and would not serve any useful purpose, since the context and interactions of these various narrative threats is what makes the reality dysfunction interesting in the first place. Also, as a point of reference, the plot summary on Wikipedia that just superficially skims over the major story elements is nearly 3000 words long. Indeed, reading the reality dysfunction is a time-consuming endeavor, and nothing that should be accomplished in one sitting. As mentioned earlier, the reality dysfunction demonstrates masterful world-building, immersing readers in a meticulously crafted universe with fascinating tiered systems of technology, from the marvels of high-tech habitats to the mundane worlds and the rugged, low-tech colonies at the frontier. Each level is vividly portrayed, adding depth and realism to the story and narrative universe. This is furthered by the intricate balance of power between the various factions, such as the Adamists and Edenists, to name an obvious example. While the Adamists' initial reluctance toward biotechnological constructs due to religious motivations might appear somewhat unconvincing from today's Western perspective, intriguingly this could indicate a potential pendulum swing with religions regaining prominence in shaping humanity's destiny in the future. Plot-wise, the reality dysfunction embarks on an epic journey, acting as a grand introduction to the vast confederation universe. The main storyline takes time to unfold, meandering through the opening chapters. It becomes apparent that Peter F. Hamilton might have adjusted his narrative plans during the writing process, leading to some surprising twists and turns. While this deviation might raise concerns about coherence, the author cleverly employs these diversions to misdirect readers and unveil intriguing surprises at unexpected moments. Nonetheless, some inconsistencies do arise, such as, for example, a protagonist's seemingly non-existent emotional response to a lover being in peril on a distant planet. Nevertheless, the novel manages to address these discrepancies, albeit a few hundred pages later than one might have expected in a conventional narrative. While the reality dysfunction presents a captivating plot and awe-inspiring universe, the characters prove to be a mixed bag. Initially, certain protagonists might come across as slightly grating or even unappealing, leaving readers yearning for more depth. However, as the narrative progresses, they undergo significant growth and development, eventually becoming more engaging and endearing. On the other hand, some characters who initially hold great promise plateau as the story unfolds. Regrettably, in some cases, these once interesting figures even revert to one-dimensional archetypes, failing to reach their full potential. This is a trend echoed throughout the entire trilogy. It seems that Peter F. Hamilton at this stage in his writing career was still a bit inexperienced in creating rich, appealing characters. In my view, he has improved in this aspect in his later works, whereas others might still contest the qualities of his characters. So, should you start reading The Reality Dysfunction or not? Well, if you are familiar with Peter F. Hamilton's style and you enjoy reading rather long, imaginative stories, then go ahead. The Reality Dysfunction will open up an interesting narrative universe with a slew of unexpected twists and turns. Be warned, though, that it might consume quite some time, once the story really starts going. If you liked this video, you may also enjoy the other reviews and content on my channel.
Feel free to leave a comment if you want to discuss the novels or if you want to suggest other books that I should review in the future. Please consider upvoting and subscribing, it is much appreciated. Thank you for watching and until next time.